Hello everyone, this is the second of two presentations about Shrubland Street for the Leamington History Group. Part one was all about the street. This is part two and is about Shrubland Street School. It's been a pet project of mine for some years now. The reason? Well, I used to live in the old street and I attended the school from 1958 until 1964. And I have fond memories of both. On the 14th of November, 1881, girls from St. John's School and several from Court Street Wesleyan School transferred to Spencer Street Board School to form the Central Girls School for the Southern District of Leamington. And then on 7th of July, 1884, Spencer Street schools closed and the girls were transferred to a new school built by the Leamington School Board in Shrubland Street. At the same time, the board also built a school in Leicester Street. Having opened the two new schools, the school board closed Spencer Street, Clarendon Street and William Street schools in July 1884. These line drawings are courtesy of Alan Griffin and were in the Builder magazine dated 26th of April 1884. They show what two new local schools, Leicester Street schools and Strubland Street schools would look like. This Ordnance Survey map was surveyed in 1886 and published in 1887. It shows the girls and infant schools, but the boys school is yet to be built. The boys school was opened on Monday the 2nd of October 1891. We all know about pandemics now, but back in 2019 we probably thought that they only happened in the past with the likes of the Spanish flu at the end of the First World War. However, there have been other epidemics that have affected people in Shrubland Street. The school at the end of the 19th century, and indeed into the early 20th century, was often closed due to measles epidemics, which at the time were extremely serious. On the 2nd of October 1895, the medical officer, Dr Brown, visited the school to inquire as to the number of cases of measles and fever and at 1.25 the clerk to the board informed the headmaster that the school must close forthwith until further notice. The school didn't reopen until the 4th of November. The infant's logbook dated 16th of November 1919 stated, There has been an outbreak of scarlet fever in the neighbourhood, and attendance has fallen in consequence. Two cases of diphtheria were reported yesterday. Six days later, on the 22nd of November 1919, it says there were two deaths from diphtheria and a new case had been reported. Empire Day was a huge event in schools for a number of years. Throughout the country, four and a half million children celebrated it and throughout the empire it was also kept. Empire Day celebrations had a double purpose. The first was to keep alive the memory of Queen Victoria, whose birthday was on the 24th of May, and the second was to celebrate the territorial vastness of the British Empire. In Leamington in May 1912, 3,000 local elementary school children celebrated the day. Trublin Street schools marched into Victoria Park representing Canada. One of the girls was dressed as Our Lady of the Snows with attendants. There were Red Indians, squaws, cowboys, farmers, lumbermen and miners. The children had designed and painted banners with the names of the provinces of the Dominion. They wore real maple leaves, the emblem of Canada, as buttonholes. They were collected and sent over by a Miss Robinson from the province of New Brunswick. 
The idea agreed upon was that the school should each represent a part of the British Empire and that they should march from their respective schools to Victoria Park, where they would assemble around the bandstand and there go through the simple but striking and, to the children, ever to be remembered ceremony of singing the national anthem and patriotic songs. Here in a short speech from the Mayor and the Chairman of the Education Committee, witness the Mayoress unfurl the national flag and salute the march past. In June 1912, the Shrubland Street Girls' School won first prize for their action song in the Leamington and County Musical Festival. The Owens lived at 104 Shrubland Street. They had a two-up, two-down house, but their dad rented out one room upstairs and one downstairs, so everyone had to sleep in one room. They had five children in all, John, Olive, Doris, Marjorie and Stanley. Doris Owen was born in 1923 and would have been around seven years old when this photograph was taken. 81 years later, in 2011, Doris provided me with many of the names that she remembered. When I was at this school, we had around 30 children in the class, which you may think is high. However, in June 1929, it was reported that four classrooms were constantly overcrowded. Classroom one could accommodate 40 children, but the average attendance for the previous five weeks had risen twice to 52 and had never been less than 50. Ken Wilkins was born in 1931 and attended Shrubland Street School from 1936 until 1942. In 1937, children at the school were each given one of these pin badges to celebrate the coronation of George VI and his wife Elizabeth as King and Queen of the United Kingdom and the Dominions of the British Commonwealth, which took place at Westminster Abbey in London on the 12th of May 1937. George VI had ascended the throne on the 11th of December 1936 following the abdication of his brother Edward VIII. During the tenure of headmaster Charles Gradwell the school often won singing, dancing and musical competitions. In 1939, the Junior School Choir were the winners of both the Grayson and Purcell Warren Shields. From 1939 until 1945, the entries in the logbooks were closely concerned with the Second World War and the effect it had on the children at Shrubland Street. Gas masks were carried everywhere and drills were often carried out. On the morning of 31st of August 1939, three days before the Second World War broke out, the order was given by the Ministry of Health for the national evacuation plans to be put into operation. During the next four days, nearly 1.9 million people were evacuated, including nearly 1.5 million children, as well as their teachers and other priority people. The evacuee children were allowed to take with them their gas mask, a change of underclothes, night clothes, house shoes or plimp soles, spare stockings or socks, a toothbrush and comb, a knife, fork and spoon, a mug and plate, a towel and handkerchiefs and a warm coat or Macintosh if possible. Any suitcases or bags that a child carried needed to be labelled with his or her name, their home address and name of school. They also needed sufficient food for one day. Sandwiches were made by parents, gas masks were carried around the children's necks, name badges or labels were attached to say who the children were and bags and suitcases were carried by the children. The school closed at 4.15pm until further notice 
for the reception of evacuated children. Although Leamington did not have the amount of air raids and the number of deaths that were seen in the major cities like London, Birmingham and Coventry, there were six main bombing raids on the town and 13 people died. This is the Eagle Recreation Ground around 1941. The public air raid shelter can just be seen this side of Flavel's Wall. From 9.39pm on Tuesday the 8th into Wednesday the 9th of April 1941, a number of high explosive bombs and incendiary bombs were dropped by a German aeroplane on Leamington, causing some damage to property and some casual casualties. Fortunately, there were no deaths on this occasion. At around 10 p.m., one high explosive bomb hit the public air raid shelter on the Eagle Wreck. The shelter was demolished, but fortunately, no one was sheltering in it at the time. On the 9th of April 1941, the school logbook states, Attendance very low due to a very bad air raid the previous evening and bombs being dropped in the vicinity. One of the German bombs landed in the Close, off Llewellyn Road. This is less than 200 metres from the school. Fortunately, it landed in the middle of the Close and there were no fatalities. This is class 4A in 1946, having a weaving class with teacher Miss Berry. The girl at the spinning wheel is Vera Belton, nay Wormsley, to whom I am grateful for the photograph. She even managed to name all of the children. On the 15th of July 1949, the school closed for the day to take the leavers on the annual outing. They travelled to London by coach. The headmaster wrote in the school logbook, this year we went to London and visited places of interest. The Tower, Westminster Abbey, St Paul's, Buckingham Palace, the Embankment and saw the changing of the guard. Mike Russell was good at all kinds of sports and features in a number of photographs. Within five years of the end of the Second World War, the school was overcrowded and struggling for space, probably due to the birth of the baby boomers. On the 1st of March 1951, a rental tenancy agreement for Wise Hall, which was alongside St John's Church in Tatchbrook Street, was signed between the Reverend James Crank and Warwickshire County Council for the use of the main hall, two rooms on the ground floor, and offices in the basement. The main hall was to be used for physical training purposes. The two rooms on the ground floor for classrooms and the room in the basement as a covered playground in wet weather. The toilets were also in the basement. At the rear of the church is a grass area that was used as a playground when the weather was good. In August 1960, the County Education Officer indicated that the County Council would only require the use of Wise Hall until Aylesford High School moved into their new buildings in Warwick. The Parochial Church Council took the decision to demolish Wise Hall and replace it with a new building in December 1966. The Leamington Spa Courier dated 24th of July 1953 reported on the annual open evening. Many parents had taken the opportunity to meet the staff and inspect the varied selection of schoolwork, needlework, handwork and art. Progress and class prizes were presented and Headmaster Charles Gradwell spoke not only about the scholastic successes attained during the year but also the achievements in various sporting activities. He said they were unparalleled in the history of the school. The boys won the Football League and Knockout Cup, the Cricket League and Knockout Cup, and the Athletics Trophy. And the girls held the Athletics Trophy, 
the swimming team race and the Stratton Shield. The boys were runners up for the swimming championship. These are the teachers at Shrubland Street School around 1953-54. On the back row we have Miss Slater, Mr Hill, Miss Duggins, Miss Day and Mr Martin. The next one I don't know and Mr Barker is on the end of the line. On the front row are Miss Payne, who later became Mrs Palmer, Mrs Chesterfield, Mr Gradwell, Mr Micklewright, Mrs Griffiths and Mrs Twist, the school secretary. Sport has always been important to the school and they've had some notable successes over the years. This photograph was printed in the Leamington Spa Courier dated 9th of April 1954. Terry Keane is the captain and is second from the right on the front row. Next to him on the end of the row is David Woodfield who went on to play top flight football with Wolverhampton Wanderers. The team completed a hat-trick of post-war wins in the Mid-Warwickshire Junior School Knockout Trophy when they defeated Clapham Terrace in the final by one goal to nil. These are the proud winners of the Road Safety Quiz Shield in June 1955. Pat Russell represented the school and received the shield from the Mayor. On the back row is Frankie Aston, Roger, but I don't know his surname, and Cox, I don't know his first name. On the front row is Pauline Spencer, Pat Russell and Roger Key. The head boy, Ty and Badge belong to Steve Paget, who attended Shrubs from September 1956 to June 1963. Julia Ward, née Palin, attended Shrubland Street from 1955 until 1961. She was head girl in her final year. Hazel Malin was head girl a few years later and also sent me a photo of her badge. This is a school cricket team in 1961. On the back row are Mr Fox, Neil Doughty, Ivor Talbot, John Burridge, Richard Clark, John Rolston, one that I don't know, and Mr Runchman is on the end. I don't know the first one on the front row, then it's Dave Crane, Greg Sant, Chris Lee the captain, Arlen Reese. Andrew Wood and either Alan Darlington or Alan Darlison. In 1964 the school football team won both the Football League and the Knockout Cup. On Saturday the 14th of March 1964 they won the Knockout Cup final 6-4 against Whitnash at Telford School with Rob Bench scoring a hat-trick. During the season they won every game, scoring 40 goals with only one against. As a way of recognising their achievements, Headmaster Mr Thorne took them to the Fung Wong Chinese restaurant in Euston Place. This is the school netball team in 1965. On the back row are Barbara Simmons, Jane Spencer and Angela College. On the front row we have Susan Nicholson, then I think it's Andrea Stacey, then Wendy Canning, Christine Johnson and Wendy Darlison. This is the football team in 1965. On the back row is Robert Berry, Ken Hanford, Jeremy Jones, Richard Turpin, Philip Jones, Ronald Green, Terry Allison, Dave Bunnell and Nick Reader. And on the front row is Les Preston, Mick Burridge, Dave Boffin, George Morris and Clifford Boucher. In 1984 the school celebrated its centenary with a number of events. The celebrations kicked off with a social evening 
at which Warwick and Leamington MP Sir Dudley Smith spoke of the school's warm and happy, happy atmosphere. More than 200 former staff and pupils attended an open day and former pupils and staff gathered at the school to admire the children's dancing and have tea. Chairman of Governors Tom Williams gave a speech at the Open Day. It seems hard to believe that these children are now in their 40s. There have been a number of excellent head teachers and other staff who have made an impact on this school and the children. I just want to mention two of the best. Unfortunately, I didn't know either of them. The first is Yorkshireman Charles Gradwell, who first came to Leamington to take up his appointment as headmaster in 1928. He influenced generations of young Leamington scholars and musicians. He was headmaster at Shrubland Street for over 30 years, from October 1928 until July 1959. Although specialising as a teacher in geography, drawing and science, it is for his love of music that he will be best remembered. He was also a talented craftsman. Not only did he supply many children with their first real instrument, he made replicas of many of his antique instruments that he collected. As a cellist, he was frequently to be seen performing solo or with local orchestras, playing with R.W.C. Hain or the Van der Ven Orchestra at the Pump Rooms. He was also chairman of the executive committee of the Leamington Music Festival. The second is Mrs. Val Cossentine. She was deputy head teacher at Shrubland Street from February 1976 until 1996. She's interesting because she kept animals in her classroom, including gerbils, hamsters, guinea pigs, a rabbit called Magic, a duck called, yes, you've guessed it, Donald, a goose, quails and chickens. She had an incubator in the classroom and the children enjoyed watching ducks, geese and chicks hatch. One of the hamsters was let loose during a burglary. It was found about a week later under the pool table in the Green Man pub. Mrs Cossentine would choose a child to be responsible for looking after the animals. She loved to put on Christmas pantomimes each year. The pantomime was a big part of the school year and she would adapt pantomimes so that each child had a part within their capabilities. Sadly, she passed away in 2003, aged just 63. There have been a number of reunions over the years, many of them organised by Frank James. This particular one was on the 21st of May 2011. Some of those included in the collage are Bob and Jill Starkey, Bobby and Tom Lewin, Mitch Pearson, Terry Keane, Frank James, Tessa Whitehouse, Eddie Byrne, Len Shervington, Mike Russell, Bernard Golding, Frank Darlison, Phil Archer, Paul Yarwood and Francis Reynolds. As we walked around the school, it was very clear that music still plays a very important part in the life of the school. And that's just a quick look at Shrubland Street School, or Shrubs as many of us call it. Thank you for watching. This book, which was published in July 2021, is the result of many years research, but it couldn't have been done without the many people who have provided me with photographs and information, something for which I am very grateful. Details of the book can be found on the Leamington History Group website under Publications. The book can be purchased direct from me or from local bookshops. Bye for now.